progressive mm -hmm. politics. Politics right. and social liberalism and, and financial and market liberalism yeah. is very different philosophically. Yeah. Philosophic. But you very, can see how it's confusing. Yeah. Yeah, it is confusing. So you can have people who are dyed in the wool Democrats see themselves as progressive, but they're still fairly neoliberal when it comes to economic life. And they don't know it. I mean, many people in the United States aren't aware of it. It's just the, well, right. neoliberalism is the economic policy of neoconservatism. So right. it, you yes. can see where rhetorically it gets confusing. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And the, and the neoclassical economic school of thought is neoliberal. Does uh, this creeping terminology detract from economics as a science? I don't I, view economics as a science. I view it yeah, as because people, people are, well, economics has been developed as a science, but so it's not very economic well known. Economic predictions to me it's are like... But I, I use the term chameleon terminology, too. And, well, that's one of the disadvantages. Liberalism, the meaning of liberalism, has changed over the decades. Mm -hmm. And so you need a new term. Mm -hmm. and that's. So neoliberalism. Okay, so I got a I have a question and that's bothered me about this for a long time, and this is why why is it? Um, I mean, why why aren't we talking about basic capitalism? Uh, why is it necessary to have something like neoliberalism? It seems like a variety of programs which are driven by the demands of of capitalism, basically. Yeah. I'll take a stab at that. Yeah, I, I think I think that um, I think that um, this is where we get into ideology, right? And I think that in America, particularly in the West, this is also true for especially Northern European countries, but specifically true to Canada and America and the United States, is that we have ascribed to capitalism an almost aura-like religious belief. And it is the sacred cow at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. And people do not want to talk about, question, or even imagine anything beyond capitalism because they feel as though if they question the fundamental uh, precepts of capitalism, that they will be identified by their own family members, their community, as other. And excluded. So I think there's, I think there is a social exclusion aspect to just discussing something other than capitalism. So I think people literally are scared. They're they, they're fearful of looking at something other than capitalism. They and 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 we really are talking about a 500 pound grill in the room. I mean, it all comes down to this belief, and it really isn't a science. It's a belief. It's much like religion. It's a belief in a system that, if you look at it logically and you look at it subjectively, it is not benefiting the common people. It is not benefiting the planet. It benefits an elite class. It's a pyramidal structure. And it's only the people at the top of the pyramid that are being benefited. The rest of us are supporting that system. So to, we, ha we have to learn how to get past our fear and question how well, there, there's, yeah, there's a, uh, The language has been debased. The language has been destroyed. The language that we are speaking in this room is not spoken commonly. So our ability to communicate is, is, um, is very much hindered. So we've got to be very careful, very precise in our language and how we represent ourselves and so on if we want to be persuasive, you know, ultimately going for efficacy. So I avoid the term capitalism because nobody understands what capitalism is. They don't understand what socialism is, but they've just been propagandized to since birth that capitalism is their god. You know, capitalism is everything that's good in the world. Capitalism gives them apple pie. And then ultimately, if you uh, attack capitalism, you're, you're a Satanist. So just avoid the hot button in the works and, and just try to find some other way of, of, of representing these issues. And just, I was wearing my, my t-shirt, Union for Democratic Communications Against the Neoliberal Tide. And a reporter for WBEN came up to me. He goes, I'm really surprised that you're against liberalism. Yeah. I mean, I've got the columns. And I'm like, you're a reporter for WBEN. Why? And he's like, yes. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> right? No, dumbfounded, you know. So the language, we just have to find a way to, to kind of, you know, not use hot button words that are going to shut people down and just like, you know, we've got to kind of. 
Uh, right. Yeah, but, but attacking neoliberalism yeah. it by itself, you, you can all see in this room how ineffective that is. is that we can't, but, not, but when I write, I don't call it neoliberalism. I call it corporatocracy. But, but you it know, corporatocracy or something that people can wrap their minds around. Oh, yeah. But it is effective. Neoliberalism is very effective. Depends on, but it depends on who you talk to. Yeah. But can we can we raise our hands so so like, people who want to talk? We can kind of like let me just say one more thing thing about your question. I, I'm not as concerned about the language. I, I mean, capitalism, uh, neoliberalism is a way of of operating under a capitalist economic system. So I mean, the, the for instance, the degree of state involvement in the economy and the state involvement for what purpose varies from country to country. Uh, Daewoo neoliberals say. Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, it's an extreme, unregulated, uh, well, state interference-free capital. It's not state in, state interference-free, but it's well, state interference-free in certain areas. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, well, two things. One, there's a second economic model that's on there, right, that has been here all along, which is essentially state capitalism, which is essentially what China has been operating under, and, and uh, to a lesser extent, President Russia. And that model seems to be gaining strength more and more. Uh, the other thing I want to make is in terms of when neoliberalism liberalism is taken root, and is oh, it's taken root in the elites, and it, which in a sense is taken root, and it's been successful in, take, in attacking uh, what we call neo-socialist states. Like Chile, uh, just again, it was a socialist. Uh, Chile had some of the most advanced social programs in, in South America. It was an economy that was, as well as Argentina, these were on the verge of becoming first world economies, and it was the use of state the legal state power that allows the neocons to gain, to gain a foothold to do to do begin to do their magic, and I think most generally neoliberalism neo, takes root in liberal states or even socialist states because what you have is you have an elite that want to reaffirm uh, their dominance, which has historically been removed to them, especially post World War II. Uh, we have after World War II we had a real movement toward uh, in this country was the Great Depression in Europe it was World War II. Which you had reaffirm you know, uh, the reassertion of this of a kind of social contract from the standpoint of uh, workers' rights. Uh, you know, I mean, in, in Germany, the union sit at the table with the industrial, you know, the industrialists and the government. It's a three-way. All those, all that neoliberalism is an attempt to break up those structures mm -hmm. and to reaffirm free booting capital on an international level. Mm -hmm. no. Questions, comments, Valerie? Well, I just I've seen. Uh, Richard Wolf on TV a couple times, and I was wondering if you uh, if you've heard of him. He's with two Fs. Mm -hmm. He's an economist. Yeah. And I, I was struck by the title of the first uh, lecture I saw of his. Well, capitalism hits the fan. He believes that capitalism is totally useless, and we've got to find something else. I'm not sure what he thinks we're supposed to replace it with, but it's really interesting to hear, hear how he doesn't agree with regulation because the capitalists will find a way around the regulation, that the regulation is just tweaking their system. So uh, if you could talk about that, if you want to. I mean, I'd like to read, read his stuff because I don't really understand it. Well, I think that kind of goes into the subject that I was going to go into, which is like emerging economic models that really haven't been tried before or haven't been developed. Um, that are very different from what we have now, and I think I think that is what we need to move towards. Personally, I think that this model you can tweak it all you want; it doesn't work. You can kick this tire all you want. Yes, yeah, it doesn't work. It's not going to work. It doesn't work now. It it has always been based on oppression. It will. It's based on oppression now, and it will be based on oppression in the future. And you can tweak it a little bit here and a little bit there, but it isn't going to change dramatically. Just like. Um, Changing a Democrat with a Republican president doesn't change the system at all. It's still the same car, the same engine under the hood. You can put an R on the front of the hood for four years and then take the R off and put a D on the hood for four years. But that engine is still the same engine. And until you start getting down to the engine, uh, you're just replacing hood ornaments. In the meantime, we have people out now. And a lot of people don't believe that. I was talking to somebody who just didn't understand what pico means. Pico is when you got to dig into the Gulf like miles. It's when you got to create earthquakes to get more gas to yeah. sell yeah. overseas when you don't need it at home. I mean, it's 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 an it's an insane thinking that you can just take and take and take and take. You know, it's a taking mentality. Mm -hmm. 
But people don't, the, the television isn't telling people what's happening yet. No, it won't it, ever tell it, them. No, it bumps people out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it darkens your shopping experience. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you Oh, it's so much fun. Oh. I was going to go to you into that. It's dark side. It's really dark side because it's based on divide and conquer. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the point that the gentleman on my right, your left, brought out before. No name, sir? Mike. Mike, Eugene. Um, the program cuts are, is a racist assault. And I also think that it is a Achilles heel. So you might want to explore that even further. Hmm. Are you trying to get them? They're cutting food stamps. <clears throat> yeah. You know how you get on different applications, race, you know? Lately I've been just, you know, I get, I get some wire for occasion and I say, nah. I put on other, I put rainbow. Nice. Nice. Oh, okay. Rainbow. It's good. It's good. I don't argue it's an ethnicity. Huh? As an ethno-rainbiologist, I don't argue it's an ethnicity. <laughs> yeah, a specific subculture for sure. <laughs> when, you and then. Uh, when these contracts these are, are signed, uh, the Buffalo teachers better there's all of a sudden you're reading in the paper where somebody's got breast enhancement surgery, breast reduction surgery, penis enlargement surgery. Come on! What? You know, who, who reviews this stuff before they sign their name to it? A policeman retired, a patrolman, at $105,000 a year pension. Who, who signs these contracts? Well, whoever's negotiating for the administration, yeah. for the school district, or for yeah. the city of Buffalo, or whatever. Now, you know, they have um, binding interest arbitration in the state system. And there are some problems with the public sector uh, labor relations law in New York State, I'm convinced. But nonetheless, these are these are collectively no negotiated contracts. But I'll, I'll defend them, and I and I defend them too. I think maybe uh, their the structure in which collective bargaining occurs in the United, in in the state of New York in the public sector probably has some weaknesses. I'd ask you a question for a but second. But just that, that that BTF contract. You know, regionally these are among the lowest paid teachers in this area. You know, they're making far less than teachers are making in Amherst and other other communities. And when they were negotiating the contract, apparently they prioritized breast enhancement, penis enhancement, whatever surgery, over over monetary compensation. But that's part of a negotiated package that they wanted. Um, so they paid less than other people, but they can you know have breast enhancement surgery. I don't know why they wanted that, but it's not that they're paid more. It's not that they're paid above market rate. And it's the same thing with you know with public pensions. Um, I've dedicated my life uh, to, to public service because I, it, it didn't make any sense working, you know, working to en enrich um, some private corporation that's destroying the world. And part of, you know, part of what is, is attractive in my field, we get paid less for working um, for the state, but part of the compensation package that, that compensates for that is we pay into a retirement system that is guaranteed by the state instead of one that is guaranteed by a corporation that can abscond with the funds where they go or, or, or go bankrupt. So again, you know, um, these public workers have, have paid for these things. One thing you might want to be asking is why do, why do police officers make these obscene salaries? And that's because this is a police state. Yes. And that's, that's a whole different, that's a whole different, that's a whole different issue. We have, we have time for one more comment or question, but before we do, I want to announce a couple things. One is there's a sign-up sheet if you want to be involved or be informed about Occupy Buffalo events. Please sign up here with your email before you leave. There's information to take if you're interested. Um, Monday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. in Niagara Square, we have a general assembly. Um, and on Saturday at noon, there's general assemblies. Buffalo, um, OccupyBuffalo.org is our website if you want more information about the group. And Occupy Buffalo on Facebook is uh, where you can find daily information. We have a calendar and, and all of that. So I just wanted to put that information out before we end the night. But uh, we have time for basically one more, and you were next. I may have missed it because I came a few minutes late, but this capitalism thing and war, endless war, are we aware of that too? 
Sure. I mean, I mean, again, I, I said the capitalism is based on oppression, and I think uh, war is something that is not to be won or lost. It's something to be fought because because capitalists make money on the prolonged use of war. And you'll see in the last ten years, we've been in endless war. They're gonna they're gonna work as they're winding one war down to start another one somewhere else because it isn't about winning. That the propaganda that they sell you on Fox News about being patriotism and waving some flag is for people who are not really looking at the wizard behind the curtain. The wizard behind the curtain is making money by the fighting of the war. It isn't about winning it, and it's not about losing it. It's about fighting it for as long as possible. Wait, do we have time for one more question? In the back? I actually had a, uh, a two-part question. One, because I'm going to be honest with you, I'm kind of new to a lot of this, a lot of it kind of went over my head. Sure. Um, no, no, I'm not um, Is there any resources you recommend, books or anything that kind of simplify and keep me into it? Because Stuff you drop on me is kind of like, you know, like a atomic bomb on my brain right now. Right on. You know, so, right on. that's one thing. And the second question I, would, like, I wanted to ask, you know, what kind of reason, because you don't want to be drunk into something without a plan is, now that we know that there's an issue, what is a reasonable plan that we can put in motion, assuming that people don't want to just be shell shocked and culture shocked and sure. something that's completely new? Well, one of the things we didn't get to is the emerging is my talk, which is more solution based and, and ideas about moving out of this problem, which we didn't get to because we just ran out of time. But um, so when are we going to schedule that? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be, we will we'll reschedule that. Um, but uh, in, in terms of a book, a good a good starting point, uh, a book I've looked a little bit at, and I've and a lot of the people in the movement are reading is Debt: The First Five Thousand Years. And it really kind of breaks it down. It's a big book, but you can just take it in sections, and it just kind of breaks it down for you. Um, in yeah. terms of what we can do now, then you can just say, if you have an email address, I can send you a list of stuff. Oh, yeah. And no. some of them are very, very thin. Okay. <laughs> some of them are big. I like those little books. Well, some good books are Whatever Happened to Penny Candy, which uh, early teen and up, and Economics in One Lesson is a classic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, and uh, in terms of what we can do, one of the things that we need to do is we need to get involved. We each have to, have, to, have to participate at the level of which we're capable of doing right now. So getting involved, it's very important because we're at a crossroads now. These things that you're seeing are only going to get worse. You're going to see structural adjustment policies for the United States not very, not very far in the future. This, this, this is something that's going to be applied everywhere. Because it's a pyramid structure, there's no loyalty to nationality, there's no loyalty to flag. That's just sold for you, yeah. for the people who are going to go be the cannon fodder. I don't yeah. agree, but I look at it like this, I mean, skin color really doesn't matter to me. No. Just, mm -hmm. That's right. right. And one person for it, another person for it, it happened to me. That's right. So well, the big, the big issue is, is class, mm -hmm. and we don't talk about it in our schools. Because we're all the middle class. Right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> Just one thing I want to make to you too. Albert is going to be doing a talk on the resource-based economy as part of the justice dialogues that we hold on Saturday afternoons. And I don't know if we have a date for that, but if you're interested in hearing about these possibilities for the future, sign up for the email and you'll be notified of that event. And this Saturday at 3 o'clock, I'm giving a talk. Uh, I could occupy Buffalo. If it's a nice day, it'll be in the square. Okay. If it's raining, it'll be at Second Cup Coffee downtown, which is near the square, which is right across from the library. But at three o'clock, I'm giving a talk about because um, it's on in, you know, Earth Day, and we're going to be talking about the environment yeah. and how this culture affects the Earth and our recent natural resources. That's the last thing I was going to say, because like both you gentlemen, both you know, all three, uh, really this one's fucking on YouTube. Like you were saying about uh, living. In things like that. The reason why I ask that question because in my mind, I kind of slightly disagree with what you said about uh, like the sacred cow. I do believe there is a sacred cow. But I don't think it's that people just don't care. People, I don't, I don't think people are completely aware of what the problem is and how to go about it. Because everybody can see that they're not what they want to be and it is a problem. But what is the problem? And I think that's something that goes over a lot of people's head. And I also agree with what you said about people coming together and just contributing. But I don't think everybody's quite ready for the shit around. But I do respect it. And I, 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 I think it's noble. I, I think it's noble. But I just feel like, like in the beginning, it's got to be a middle ground, and like it just got to be something where everybody can access it. Because like a lot of stuff that you were saying, I, I like the ideas. I couldn't quite, quite grasp all of it though. You know, because a lot of terminology is, is terminology I haven't been exposed to. So I feel like if you can get it, so it's like not culturally shocking, 
<laughs> Everybody can understand it. And it's in the middle. I, I, I think people do care. They just don't know, you know how to access it. I, I got the global economy explained to me really well in the comic book. I've got the comic book in my house. I'll send you the citation. Okay. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'll send, send, send you. But just, I, I'll just ask you to be patient. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I definitely appreciate it. There's, 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 a, there's a wonderful... Um, We're very old. <laughs> this shit took a long time. There, there's, a, there's a wonderful comedian named Dee Jackson, mm -hmm. and he runs a, a weekly news program called the FKN News, the fucking news. And, and what he does is he takes world events, and then he tells the truth about what's really going on. And a lot of times he'll end it with a weather forecast, right? And, and his weather forecast is he shows a globe of the earth, and he's dressed up as a newscaster. You know, he has this three-piece suit on, and he's very, like, deadpan, and he's great. And he points over here, and he'll point. He'll say, and he'll point like at Europe or United States or Canada. He's like, a, a few very white, rich people over here are taking advantage. And he'll point like to Africa or South America. They're taking advantage and exploiting very poor brown people over here. They're destroying the earth. They're making lots of profits, but very little resistance. Have a nice weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the same. This is a TV show or on the. It's on the internet. It's yeah. called the FKN News. It was like the news. The internet is TV. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.